Um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the directors, Jeremy Della. <laughs> Nicholas Abrahams in the, in the middle. Uh, the producer of the film, Jackie Eden Brown. And uh, Alan Wilder. That's so unfair, we didn't get a woo. <laughs> So unfair. I'll, uh, I'll ask, ask you the first question, if that's okay, Alan, although I think uh, there might be a few more to follow. Um, did you already know how, uh, how deep the depths of devotion of Depeche Mode fans across the, road, the world ran, or uh, have you learned yeah. something from the film? I, yeah, meant, I meant world. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking right at the end there, in fact, how um, familiar I was with so many of these stories. And in a way, without wishing to denigrate what you've done at all, it was almost perhaps an easy film for them to make because I've heard these stories over the course of 25 years and every time uh, people have come backstage whenever we played gigs or whenever we bumped into fans, they'd always come out with some kind of tale of devotion such as this. And uh, so I guess I am quite familiar with it and not surprised by it in, in many ways, but still very moved and I found it a very warm and you know, lovely film. You must feel quite proud. Very much so, yeah. Uh, yeah, are there any uh, questions from the audience? Oh, don't be shy. <laughs> could, could hello. This, hello, hello, Alan again. Could this film be made about any other band? Probably not the that one. <laughs> <laughs> At the first screening, I made a rude joke about U2, saying it couldn't be made about U2. <laughs> and I had to stand by my words. I don't, not really. There's only a few bands that have this sort of level of, of, of importance globally, uh, so there aren't many really. And also they're sort of a, an underground band but very popular at the same time, so there aren't many bands like that, so not really. What really struck me was the, uh, I think it was the Russian who said that Depeche Mode was music for the lonely. And I wondered what it is that creates this wonderful community with Depeche Mode's music, which is almost like music from a lonely bedroom or something, whereas you too, kind of really try to reach out to huge crowds and a music for crowds and yet don't create this community in the I, same way. I'm going to say something very briefly then Alan should say something. But I think a friend of mine who's just left actually unfortunately said that you 2 is, is music for people who don't like music. And uh, <laughs> I think. Well that's what he said. But also very, you 2 and Depeche shared Anton Corbin for a while didn't they? In, in terms of yeah. working with him. But I don't know, you t what do you think about it? I thought it was interesting the uh, the Russian girl who insisted on translating into Russian, and she said a great quote. I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was something about you don't un you English have no right <laughs> to understand what it is we get from you your music, you know. And I suppose um, I was intrigued by that and almost perplexed by it because I guess we don't really understand it. Um, my feeling is that Martin, in particular, his songs. And the band as a, as a whole generally are very unpretentious and very sort of honest in a way. And I think that's a, a lot of what people relate to. But why we, why we translated so much outside of this country is also intriguing. You know, I don't really know why that is. I just wanted to ask um, the filmmakers how, uh, just, just a basic question really, how did you come to, how did the whole project come about? How did you come to collaborate together on this project? Nick and I had already been talking about making a film about music fans. And this seemed like the perfect opportunity. And um, he showed me 101, which was a film by D.A. Penny Baker about the 101st concert, which took, where Depeche Mode took a group of fans on the road with them in a tour bus that followed them across the country. And it was the fans that captured our imagination. You know, we love seeing Dave in his boxer shorts, but it was the fans, <laughs> definitely. And um, yeah, and then Nick knew Jeremy, and I knew Jeremy. I knew it would strike a call, Jeremy. I knew it would be right up his street. And luckily, he said, yeah. He'd make it with us. And also, we knew about East, the Eastern Bloc or something we were really intrigued with. Maybe you could say a few words about that in a minute. But that was something that was legendary or mythical about the band's appeal in Russia and Eastern Europe. And that really, I thought that was interesting. It was like West Coast America and then Russia. That's quite two very different societies at the time. And I thought that was a really interesting thing. And also, also you said you've been to Russia more recently. So you might have a perspective on the, the fans there now as well. I don't know if you want to. 
Well, um, it's interesting uh, you should mention the Penny Baker thing because it has the feel of that Penny Baker fi film about it. And what I really liked about the Penny Baker film was the non-intrusive aspect of his style of filmmaking. I think you did something very similar here. You know, it would have been very easy for you to try to uh, take a view on the, the people you spoke to. And, and I think you did very well just to sit back and let them speak for themselves. And, and what you get because of that is a, a true sense of the individuals and a warmth. And, you know, it, it would have been very in, uh, easy to make a kind of cynical film about Depeche Mode fans, perhaps. Um, one of the criticisms I've heard from a few fans is that they say, oh, it doesn't represent us. You know, we're not all as mad as that. <laughs> but I don't think it's about the average fan. I think it's about the slightly extraordinary fan and, and the extraordinary effect the music or, you know, just following something can have. Mm -hmm. And going, you know, onto your point about Russia, we never, when I was in the group, um, we never actually played in Russia at all. We'd heard very much about the following and the fact that we were huge there, but it didn't perhaps quite compute properly. Um, when you see this, you kind of, in retrospect, can, can see what was happening. And, and it's very interesting, certain moments in the film where they talk about the coincidence of time between the sort of falling down of the Eastern Bloc and, and how that coincided with certain records that meant something to them. Um, and then I, I also like the kind of link, uh, my friend Leslie, who's sitting back there, said, oh, Basildon looks a bit like an Eastern Bloc town, doesn't it? <laughs> and, uh, and it does, you know, and you kind of started getting me thinking as the film was going, as the kind of link between those things. And I noticed you sort of spent quite a lot of time on the Russians and the Romanians, and I guess it, it, it struck a chord with you too. Well, we weren't there for long, but everything mm. that happened there was interesting, and every person we met was really... Great for the film, basically. Yeah. Only there three days. Yeah. And we got all of that in three yeah. days, basically. That's great. Yeah. But I, I, I want to ask Alan. I mean, what are your memories of, of those days with, with fans? I mean, did you get to meet many, or were you protected from them? No, we never overprotected ourselves. We enjoyed meeting the fans, and uh, we met many from those times. But you told me just before tonight we met tonight that you'd um, uh, when, you, when this was instigated, I think four years ago or something, was it? Three or four years ago? You um, received how many e emails was it? 5,000 emails. So what was your process of wading through and deciding who you would actually... I mean, you just had to kind of use your instinct, I suppose, did you? Yeah. Um, and were there people, you know, as, as I think she asked, you know, that just were, weren't right? I mean, why were they not right? What would you say were the reasons? Well, I mean, we... We did, we put, we put in the hours, we, we did go through thousands of emails and responded to thousands of emails and uh, just narrowed it down, a bit like a detective would, you know, um, and yeah, we did, we spoke to people and, and also though, sometimes you'd speak to people and it would sound amazing and then you'd meet them and you'd discover they maybe had exaggerated things a bit or, you know, slightly fabricated things um, and other people, Orlando who's in the film was very, very shy on the phone, the, the guy young teenager near the beginning. But when we met him, um, him and his family, you know, his mum were, were fantastic. Um, it's just, it, it was a little bit hit and miss. And like I say, 100 hours cut down to an hour. It's, there were a lot of interviews done. Um, did, you, um, did you come across sort of suspicion? Were some of the fans scared that you would misrepresent them in some way? Not really, I don't think. Do you? A few of them were like, they just, they just didn't believe it was, it was kind of real, like, they just thought we were making it up and it wasn't actually a real film. <laughs> also, I think, I think some, some people thought we, we might be kind of taking a mickey, you know, that the film might be going, you know, pointing and going, oh, how, how strange you all are, uh, which obviously, I, you know, I imagine you can see from the film that that isn't or wasn't our intent at all. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's very clear and a very good point to make that, um, that's clearly not your intent, you know. And uh, as I say, that would be so easy to do and, and unfair. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> do we have the next question? It will be released on DVD. Well, hopefully, yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully ne early next year, but we're still... Perfect. We're waiting for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Polish fans. <laughs>